Hello everyone, in this video I tell you the three things, or three of the things, that I like about pre-season. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Yep, as I said in the intro, I'm going to tell you about the three things, or three of the things, that I like about the cricket season. It's March, spring is upon us in the UK at least, and if you haven't already started preparing for the season ahead, you're about to. Okay, so the first thing, number one thing that I look forward to, or I like about pre-season, is indoor nets. Now, <clears throat> for me, indoor nets is the sign that the we really are gearing up for the season ahead uh, and it switches everybody on to thinking about the, the up and coming season. Um, it's a great opportunity for me to see the people, see the cricketers that I haven't seen um, for months. You know, bear in mind if you're in the UK, we the season ends in September. Um, we don't start sort of getting together again until probably late January, early February. Um, uh, with a series of weekly nets normally leading up to the first match of the season which is generally in April um, weather permitting <clears throat> now like I said this is a great opportunity to to, to catch up with friends um, and start the sort of cricket banter and discussions going again however I love netting but I've seen some things about it that maybe you've got an opinion on things that I'd like to share and those are basically you turn up to nets and it's freezing. So in February, March time, you're either turning out, um, so in the cold weather, it's still sort of winter. Um, you're either getting up early on a Sunday morning or you're going out late at night, midweek after work and it's still pitch black. It's dark and cold and wet. Um, but it's tradition, so we do it, and we like seeing our mates again, don't we? We like seeing people connected to the club. And then you get to nets, and once you've decided if you're in a first team net, a second net, a fast bowling net, or a spin bowling net, you have a go, and then all of a sudden, every... I was a medium, slow medium pace trundler, little dobbler, but yet something about those nets gave me the impression that I could bowl quick. So that's exactly what I tried to do. And I think it's exactly what every other media based trundler tries to do as well. So when you're down the other end, expect, you know, wanting some consistency to get your, get, your, get your shots, get your feet moving again and get some shots you know, going and feel bat on ball, you are bombarded with people running in like Devon Malcolm um, bowling off 18 yards instead of 22 because who who measures these things? Who knows? Who's picking people up? So everybody decides to bowl off, you know, um, that um, that shorter distance. Beamers, bouncers, the whole the whole selection of things could come your way, and you never can predict what that's going to be like. Especially somebody rocking up and bowling as fast as they can off 18 yards after sort of what is it six seven months of of, of not turning their arm over at all. So that's, um, yeah, that's fun. Uh, and I have seen a few injuries before, but uh, hey-ho, that's, um, that's what I like about nets. Oh, one more thing about nets. Generally, in my experience, clubs have set sort of uh, nets up for 10 weeks, or so 10 weekly nets in the build-up to um, hopefully a little bit of outdoor netting, but certainly 10 weeks before the first match of the season. That's way too early. Ten weeks is is a long time, um, so I tend to find they're going a little bit too long, and you just want to you just want to get out there on the on the grass and you know just start playing. Ten weeks, yeah. Um, let me know if anybody does actually think ten weeks is appropriate or not. Okay, so the second thing I like about preseason, and and again these are just my likes. They may not be yours. Um, let me know what you like, what you don't like about pre-season, what you're looking forward to most. But the number two thing on, on today's list is the buzz. If I can just call it the buzz of cricket. <clears throat> so this is when um, you, you've got out of your indoor nets and it's, it's time to start stretching off and going out outdoors. Um, inevitably, you've got to open up the, the old pavilion 
uh, and see what's managed to crawl in there over the winter. Um, check out, check if anybody's vandalised it, stolen anything, taking the copper off your roof. Um, but ultimately, we have to get in there and, and, and um, prepare it for the season ahead. And obviously, the grass will need a cut, which is fair enough. Generally, in April, when we start in the UK, it's, it's, it's still very, very uh, damp wickets, low and slow. Um, so they, they do need a lot of work early early season. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's good. I think when I say buzz, um, I think there's a lot to be said about the sights, sound, and, and even the smell of cricket. So by sights, it, it, it's seeing people, it's seeing the grass being cut, it's seeing the groundsman roll the wicket, it, it's seeing people just getting busy around the pavilion and, and, and the club. Um, the sound, it's leather on willow. The sound of hammering a new bat in, um, and just hear people have a laugh. Uh, and by the smell, now I'll come on to my kit bag in a minute, but I think the smell, linseed oil, um, freshly cut grass, that's really something that really says that the cricket season is here for me. Um, so I mentioned my kit bag, and this is probably one of the downsides of, of sort of preparing, you know, in the, in the weeks leading up to. Uh, leading up to the season is that you've got to clean your kit bag out and if like me you're somebody who at the end of the previous season just locks their kit bag away in the shed the garage the loft spare room and doesn't even think about clearing it out then you, yeah you might not like what you see when you uh, when you open it up in in sort of february march april time the following year yeah old lunches damp balls um yeah. Oh, another thing I meant about the nets. Why does somebody, there's always one person who always brings out what I call a BNC, brand new cherry. So that's a brand new cricket ball. And this is, this is probably the, the, the guy that doesn't really bowl that much in the season, but yet he's invested in a brand new ball to bring to nets. And he's sending those thing down, things down like rockets. Why? Um, but yeah, okay. And the third and final thing that I like about pre-season is just, I've already mentioned the bows and that's actively about the game, getting ready for the game. But if I can just say the social side of, of, of cricket. So this is organising your events. No doubt there's going to be some fundraising events. Um, it's nights out with, with your teammates. It's barbecues. Um, it's seeing families out on, on the field and kids with the, the plastic bats and toy sets playing and you know, you get the, you see all the different teams practicing out there, junior teams, um, and it's just, just the buzz around that. And looking forward to the season and, and trying to anticipate how successful you're going to be if you're going to have a good season. Reviewing your averages, see see where you can improve next year, and you know what what you personally want to achieve out of the season. Ultimately, I think it's just a, looking forward to the next five months of good weather, good healthy sporting spirit, competitiveness banter um yeah that increased activity in your social life so that's it that was a quick one from me um i would very much like to hear what you thought of what i've said if you agree disagree uh, with what i've said what you're looking forward to about the coming season um please drop me a message let me know what, you, what your thoughts are um like and subscribe all that business but other than that i'll see you soon